What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mode IJ and we are locked in. This is day six of Recap and Cross on Amazon Prime. So obviously this is the episode six recap. A bang, not a whimper. At the end of episode five, we seen that Alex Cross ended up getting kicked out of Ed's house on his birthday, kind of like Jazzy Jeff on Fresh Prince. They escorted him out and Chief told him, you're done, mister. You are done because he made a fool of himself and Ed got the best of him. So I got to say Ed is up. 1-0 right now. But before we jump into this and we break down episode six, if you like this kind of content, crimes, thriller, murder mysteries, trying to solve different cases, then Cross is the show for you. And we're watching an episode every single day. But go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode six, a bang, not a whimper of Cross on Amazon Prime. Seeing Alex get kicked out of Ed's birthday party was kind of heart-wrenching to all of us, but it had to be done. He had to expose his cards. That's why Ed was one up on him. But Chief told him to go and talk to the union rep because it's pretty much over with for him. And the union rep tells him, you need to go down there and turn your badge and gun in. Now, you could have them come and pick it up, but his kids don't know what had been going on. So he said he wants to go down there. But once he turns his badge and gun in, he also has a non-contact meaning he can't do anything to anyone on any of the cases that he's previously been working. And he's looking at this without that badge and that gun. He feels like he's empty. This was his number one priority outside of his family, obviously. While Alex is going down to turn his gun in, his badge in, everyone is outside protesting still. And he runs into Malika. He's like, Malika, can I talk to you? She's like, F you, Alex, F you. Because it feels like he dropped the ball. So everyone is looking at Alex thinking, hey, man, you're part of the problem, Alex. You're part of the problem. You're why none of this has been solved. We've been telling you what's going on, and you never believed us. And he's actually been making some headway in figuring out this case, but no one really understands it like him. That's why Alex Cross is better than us. When Alex comes down here, Chief and Lieutenant, they're sitting here talking to him, and he's upset, rightfully so. He's been trying to solve the case. But they're like, Alex, listen, you're wrong. He's like, well, I should be here to solve the case. They said, no, 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 no. Listen here. They searched the house and they didn't find anything. So Alex is saying, wait, y'all searched Ed's house the day after I told you all of this. They gave him time to move whoever was in there. Now, Lieutenant really isn't saying too much. She's a little reserved. Chief is the one saying, Alex, you keep talking like this. You're going to wish you never talk like that in this office because I'll make all your worst nightmares come true. Turn your badge, turn your gun in right now. So Alex, he has to do it. He's hurting because he's this close to solving this case. Alex isn't a police officer at the moment. Turning his badge and his gun is pretty much over. So when he goes into the locker room, everyone's looking at him. But on the inside, it's him and John. And they end up going at it. These two are like brothers. They've been around each other known each other for 30 years, worked together for 15, and now they're going at it. Alex is blaming John for reporting him, and John is saying, how are you mad at me for reporting what you did? You beat that man. He said, I was trying to find who killed Maria. So now these two are at odds. It took another detective to come in here to try to break them up. Man, you never want to see these brothers fight amongst each other, but tensions are high. After they break Alex and John up, when he goes back to his desk to collect his belongings, there's another bouquet of flowers. And it says, you're still my number one. He knocks them over and says, does anyone know who sent this? So whoever's sending these flowers, they're still messing with them. Now, we're thinking that it might be Ed. We aren't for sure. But he's upset. Right when he leaves from work, he gets a phone call. Damon is acting up at school. When they get to the school, we find out that Damon is fighting people. And there's a no fighting tolerance at this school. Zero tolerance. Zero. No pushing, no fighting, no slapping, no, no, no tripping. None of that. None of that. So Alex, he's already upset. Now he has to deal with his son who got in trouble again. It's only been, what, three episodes since the first time he got in trouble. Once Alex gets home, he does have abolished police on the side of his car because everyone was upset. Now, the FBI agent, Kayla, she shows up and she's talking about she sent the information over to John, but she found out that Alex is no longer on the police force. So she hand carried it over here. Now, she has some information about Ed and what went on back at home. Well, there's this group called White Mike. 
that was a, a rock band. In this footage, there's a young photo of Ed in the crowd watching. Now, there's no longer a white Mike group, but there's a guy by the name of Mike Gresham in Philly that, well, Alex, he needs to go question. The mold of Shannon's teeth have been put together, and now they're giving it to the, the dental tech, and he's making a mouth guard that resembles the teeth. And you see he's getting a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Money to make people do some strange things. But for him, he doesn't know what this is for. He's just putting some teeth together. It could be prosthetics for a play. We never know. We finally see Shannon with her new grill in. Now, this grill is hideous. One tooth is overlapping the other. One tooth is sticking out. I don't know if this is the L7. I have no idea about teeth. Let me just tell you, these teeth are terrible. But this is exactly, exactly what Ed wanted. Now, you can still see the cut on the side of her face, and he has to fix that. Now, Damon got suspended from school for one week for fighting. We know we got to go up to Philly to go talk to Mike Gresham about something pertaining to Ed and this white Mike group and what actually happened. But Nana Mama says, you can't wait to go to Philly. Young Damon can't wait on his father either. He's going with you. So they're about to head to Philly together. Father-son relationship, father-son road trip. Now, I don't know how much Alex Cross is making, and it might be the pocket watcher in me. But when they head off to Philly, he pulls out his brand new Mustang, all silver. Now, remember, the black one has a bolish written on the side of it. And, well, since he ain't got no job, he decided to pull out that limited edition Mustang. And him and Damon, they head on up to Philly, and they listen to Black Eyed Peas the whole way. Kayla is playing the middleman between John and Alex. They aren't talking right now. We know brothers, they get into it with each other. And even John says we might not be on good terms even further down the road. But what she does say is, since he's going to Philly, those LLCs that we found about, well, those Harry Powers, unless someone comes forward and claims them, the FBI put a hold on all of those accounts. So no money can be moved through there, which is going to wrinkle the whole operation. Bobby Trey turned over the book to Ed, so he was supposed to receive a $2.2 million wire. But that wire never came through because the funds are frozen, so there's no way that it could happen. Now, him and the dog that he got, remember, this is the dog that was in the cage when he had Shannon behind the dog in the other cage. He tells the dog, we need to get on the road because we got to pay somebody a visit. He was trying to get low, but this money didn't go through because Harry Powers is the one overseeing these accounts. And the feds, they froze the assets. Alex and Damon, they have their disagreements. On the way up here, and we find out the reason that Damon was fighting is because everyone's seen the video footage of Alex assaulting that victim. And he was defending his sister. He was defending his family name. So, all right, we get it. You were fighting to protect the family. We can let that slide. Now, he didn't want Damon to come on this trip. But after he realized what Damon was fighting for, he understood. So they pull over, they get some junk food. Don't tell Nana Mama because, you know, she'll kill us. She gave us some carrots and celery. We're not eating that on no road trip. And he gets a couple of mix shakes and says, listen, whatever happens on the road, it happens on the road. So he's basically telling his son, me and you, we have a bond. A father-son relationship is different than any relationship in the world. It's probably one of the best relationships you can have. Well, Ed is trying to fix up Shannon's face. We got the teeth together, but now we have to do this cut. Now, the specialist that she brought in, she's saying some people, they'll stitch it up. They'll use makeup, but you'll be able to notice it through a camera. So you have to use this putty for what they put on bodies that they're about to bury. And she does an amazing job. So she covers it up and Ed's even looking and thinking, OK, this is a good job. She's starting to look a little more like Eileen. Thank you for that. Shannon, she tried to save herself by cutting her face, but it didn't work. Once they get to Philly, Alex goes straight to Mike Gresham's house. They dropped everything off. Damon's going to sit in the car. I'm going to go over here and do a little bit of questioning. Now, when he gets up to Mike Gresham, he tells him, hey, I need to talk to you about Ed, Ed Ramsey. He ends up stepping outside and closing the door. Now, he's trying to say he doesn't know too much about him or know about him at all. But Alex said, if that's the case, then why would you close this door? Why would it matter if your kids hear you talking to me? 
if you don't know who Ed is or had anything to do with him. Well, Mike, he has a guilty conscience, and we're about to find out something. Well, it turns out he does know about Ed, but he didn't want his family to know because the band White Mike, he used to be the lead singer. Now, Ed wasn't a fan of the group. Ed was a fan of the stuff he was talking about because the group was very, very dark, talking about murder, crimes, sacrificing people. Now, it turns out that Mike Gresson has a video. Now, there's some weird stuff going on this, so viewer discretion advised, but he needs to show Alex because he's been feeling guilty about it. Now, this is August 21st, back in the day, one day before my birthday. And on this tape, you don't see Ed on the tape. He's just recording. All you see is Mike, and then you see another guy. When this guy comes over, they say today is a good day for him to die. Now, they're assuming that they're just going to take some photos, you know, fake sacrificial lamb. We'll have these. We'll put them out on posters. But when they get there, it's a real knife. So while they have the gentleman laying down, Mike actually puts a knife to his throat but kind of cuts him. And now Ed takes the knife and actually stabs this guy. And here we see young Ed, and he actually unalived this guy. Now, Mike starts crying and saying, I didn't mean for anything to happen. Alex is telling him, you didn't do anything, but you also didn't say anything. And he just felt guilty. He said he knew at some point someone was going to come knocking on his door about this. So now what they got to do is get Mike and put him in protective custody because he is a key witness of when all of this started. Now, Grandma talked to the attorney general. And the attorney general told her that there's this guy, Mr. Tipton, that has some information about Deidre's accomplice. Now, no one knows who this accomplice is because this gentleman made it disappear. So Nana Mama shows up and she's like, I want some answers because what you did is coming back and hunting us. Me, my family, and my grandson, Alex Cross. So you need to come up with answers to who this accomplished is, because without that, we'll never be able to figure out who is behind terrorizing the family. Now that they got Grisham back down in D.C., the lieutenant is taking him to his protective custody. Now, it's not much. It's just a little studio uh, hotel room that they gave him. And we hear Mike saying, I should have said something. She's like, don't worry about it. Just stay here. You'll be all right. There's food that you can order. It'll all be charged to the Metro Police Department. But we're going to keep you here for your safety because they call for a special emergency. Well, an emergency grand jury because they want to try to indict Ed. But they want to make sure that it's correct because if they go over there and start asking him now, he'll just lawyer up. Everyone is running around because we're getting closer and closer to solving this case. We see John, him and Kayla, the FBI agent. They actually hooking up with each other. And then Damon and Alex, they having an apology session. And then they start talking about their most memorable moments with their mom. Well, with Maria. Damon's is when they went to a baseball parade. He was on his mom's shoulder. And then what Alex played was a voice recording on a voicemail. Some of y'all might be too young for that. Of all of their closest friends calling him and leaving a message, telling them they're happy. Happy for his one year anniversary. Oh, yeah. And Maria loves him. John and Kayla go and sit out front of Ed's house. Now, Ed comes out with a rose. And right now, they pretty much have him dead to rights because they have a witness. They just got White Mike, a.k.a. Mike Gresham from Philly, brought him down. He's in protective custody. The doors and the walls are closing in on Ed. But Ed comes out in a robe with some coffee. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, you're Alex Cross's partner. Oh, FBI agent Kayla. They're like, yeah, don't worry, Ed. We'll be right here waiting on you. We have a witness. And he says, a witness? What witness would you have? And he's kind of sarcastic about it. So they're looking at him like he doesn't know what we got. But this is where things get crazy. Well, that witness that they have, LT is over here telling them, you should eat some of those donuts. You don't want to do this on an empty stomach. And he's saying, nah, it's all right. So she's saying, well, it can't be any worse than my pregnant stomach. So he's over here talking to her, talking to the baby. Hey, little guy, how is it in there? Are you claustrophobic? Are you ready to pow? He falls on the ground and starts shaking. LT ain't who LT says she is. She's working with Ed, and she just took out the witness. And while the body is on the floor shaking, she finishes them off. Pow, pow. 
two more. LT, <laughs> she's not like us. All right, there you go. The recap for episode six. They said a bang, not a whimper. And let me tell you, LT went out with a bang. Man, this is crazy. I definitely wasn't expecting for LT to do this. I mean, she always seemed a little reserved and not really too attached to the case. Turns out she's with Ed. I wonder how much he's paying her. But let me know what you think about LT and her flipping and a whole twist in the storyline. And if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Tune in tomorrow for episode seven. I'm Old IJ. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.